this video, there's a summary of the 30 editions of this meeting. We've reproduced the mottos of each edition. During these 30 years, you've seen how this title has been transformed. We didn't speak about digital, but now everything is digital. This was um, for re recalling these 30 years. We've been working very intensely. My presentation is um, d focused on the topic of this meeting, building a digital Spain. We think it's necessary. And we'd like to uh, reiterate our ideas. What happened in 1987? How was the world in 87? What happened with ICTs? Today, what is the digital world offering? What are the challenges? How is the sector in Spain and in the world with figures? And then we carry out an analysis of the situation and we make a proposal in order to build a new digital Spain. In 87, it's a long time ago, but Spain uh, was accepted in the European uh, Economic Community. There were uh, 38 million inhabitants. Now um, we are 46 million. And now the life expectation is 83 years old. It's uh, impressive. Now you see the economic figures. There's been a great jump of the Spanish economy in 30 years and the great effort that it required. Another fact, in 87, Barcelona was selected to be the Olympic city in 1992. At the same time, it was the, uh, the year for the expo in Sevilla. There were many infrastructures being built. The country developed itself uh, with the horizon of 1992. Uh, the Erasmus program started that year with something which is a real success in Europe. And another piece of news which is related to this is that the government announced the second industrial reconversion. What happened in the world? Uh, 5 billion inhabitants, now it's 7.5 billion inha inhabitants. Robert Schwer received the Nobel Prize for his theory of uh, economic growth and technology advance. Let's see why is this relevant. There was a drop in um, the uh, financial markets. There was It was a crack. After 1929 was the worse. Then there was a, a hole being discovered in the ozone layer. It was a revolution also for the energy sector, New and renewable energies appeared at the time to preserve the planet. The millennials were being born in 87. The millennials are now playing an important role. How were the ICTs in Spain? We got into the uh, European community and the EU uh, published a green um, paper for telecommunications. There was a deregulation process going on. The market went from a monopoly model to an open model in which there was free competition, and this entails great impacts and uh, deep repercussions. The ICT market at the time, it's three, um, 13 billion euros, is now 90 billion uh, uh, with increases of 17, 16% every year. And as an anecdote, uh, in 87 in Spain, there were two TV channels, uh, public TV channels, and uh, the morning TV starting. There was a great controversy because people thought that um, there would be absenteeism, that people would stay, would stay home to watch TV. 
that people wouldn't go to uh, health centers in the morning because of the TV. Well, that, th this is just an anecdote. And then 30 years later, what happens now in 2016? The horizon is completely different, has nothing to do with what we had 30 years ago. And now the digital economy, in fact, where there's no clear separation between conventional and digital economy, everything is more and more digital. And it is inv invading other uh, aspects of economy. At the end of this decade, people say that uh, in the global economy, in uh, developed countries, 30% of the economy will be digital. But it's something that is covering everything and encompassing everything in the um, uh, digital ecosystem. That's internet. The regulatory frameworks are more and more complex, more difficult to use and, and to understand. This is not just affecting the technical aspects, but privacy, data protection, intellectual property. This is marking the future development of uh, the um, digital community, cybersecurity. It's a great challenge. Uh, and OTTs are invading the market, or they're generating more value. And they're the great winners, the great champions of the digital revolution going on. On the other side, there's a great pressure over industry and the operators. They are, they are monetizing worse this new market. They require more investments because earnings are not uh, increasing. There's a great uh, demands. They need more investments, and it's difficult for businesses to maintain their status. And we will speak about this later on. Uh, digital macro trends. These are the avenues for the near future. Data are now uh, the raw material. It's the access. It's the center of everything in the digital economy. If you have data, you have power. Communications are reinvented. And social network services and content are taking more and more space. Uh, businesses are evolving towards the digital world. There's a new, new users. Uh, advantaged user, they know what to ask. They are demanding users, and users are guiding marketing, and digital companies have to address a new type of users, M more prepared, uh, well-trained users. So models are changing for all these reasons. Robotics, automation, this is taking more and more importance based on um, artificial intelligence. And with this interface, man, machine, in all, in all facets, uh, with uh, augmented reality, movement, decision making, which is based on expert systems. And everything s supports the fact that the um, systems with machines are more and more able to uh, help human beings to carry out tasks that uh, would have been impossible. At the end of the day, what's going to happen later? What are the change drivers in the next few years, we don't really know. We can be intuitive, we can guess, but we don't know what are the new disruptions, uh, what are the new revolutions, what are the new drivers, what are the new changings. Something is happening in the digital are arena, that's all we can say. And what are the figures? The size of the various uh, economies in the world what about the digital economy in those economies? Here you see the three great areas, the most important in the world, North America, Asia, Pacific, Pacific and Europe. And the, underneath the growth rate in the last few years in the various economies, we see that the, this, uh, the two biggest economies ha have um, gone from the positive to the negative figures, but there's uh, still a great difference in growth uh, rates, in, the, in size between the size of Europe and the rest of economies. And we, we will see what this means and why do we need to do something to uh, cover this gap. In Spain in 2016, what happened? The figure is 91 million, major figure. 
We had 18% drop in between uh, 28 to 2013. But the, that was the economic crisis. We haven't recovered yet. In 2014, there was an increase of, uh, by 2%. And in 2015, the um, estimation by Ametic is 5% increase. In 2016, this trend is maintained. However, if we analyze the growth in 2015, the, um, it's not homogeneous. Internet services go up, digital contracts, but industrial uh, businesses go down, and there's no increase, and the consumption electronics go, goes down. It's a, there's a double negative effect because there's deindustrialization in many countries. So factories of this type uh, have disappeared in Spain, so we've lost this type of businesses. If we compare the Spanish results with uh, other countries, and Victor has referred to this, we have to speak about indexes, which are recognized at world level in the developing countries. The World Economic Forum developed the uh, RARE uh, index. Uh, Spain is qualified in uh, rank uh, 35 over 143. The uh, European index, DESI, we are uh, in our 25th position. Spain, uh, what is the best and the worst for us? Infrastructures, that's a positive point in Spain. Built infrastructures, and they've been paid by private capital with a great uh, invest investor uh, effort. This uh, differentiates us from other public infrastructures because normally they're built by the state, but in our case, it's private investment. The use of ICTs by public organizations, we are very positive there, but on the right, it's relevant to speak about digital uh, transformation on the topic of education, innovation, innovation, and the importance of ICTs in the government plans. And this is said by the World Economic Forum, it's not us. This is important to say, because we are using indicators that are based on parameters, and these parameters are compared with other countries. So my question is, we have to do something else. We've uh, grown by 5%, well over the GDP growth last year in Spain. What should we do? Well, my answer is that we need to do more. It's not sufficient. There's a correlation between the digitalization index in a country and the GDP. And this is uh, worrying. If a country, and sometimes theorists say that digitalization is going to uh, hamper growth and increase unemployment, it's not true. But we have to be careful. We need to understand it to make good decisions. Why? Does Spain need to go towards digitalization and digital transformation? Well, the WEF uh, refers uh, to unemployment, and this is the very high rate in, in Spain. What happens? Public policy don't have the necessary impact. The private sector hasn't um, tackled the uh, digital transformation. SMEs are very small in Spain. There's no, um, uh, there's not enough training or education. They don't understand that the, the uh, digital transformation is needed in SMEs, especially in our association. We discuss with SMEs and we try to convince them. We need more people with the digital profile and with the digital uh, expertise to know how to use this. I'm not talking just about specialists or experts. I'm not referring to those people. It's not about programmers. Uh, people who have the necessary digital training so that people understand how this can be transformed. How is this evolution going? And all organizations and at all levels of uh, employment, the in innovative uh, sector is not um, very buoyant. And R&D levels uh, have gone down in Spain. So what do we say? Uh, in Spain, we should go towards digital transformation. It's a question of state. There should be a consensus between all political parties. We do agree with what Victor said. We should try and have un unanimity between all political parties so that there are national plans that shouldn't be changed with a common goal. 
regardless of the uh, party in power. Well, and to have a digital Spain, we defend five big drivers, first of all. And the Secretary of State has spoken about it. Digital single market, that is something key. But also, we need to have balance, a balanced arena where we are able to recover and include everybody within this system in the right way. And this is something key for the development of our infrastructures. Without infrastructures, we won't be able to grow. Infrastructures need to improve their own capability. They need to give responses and replies to the different challenges. And that implies that we have to be able able to acknowledge that this requires investment, this requires an effort, and we need regulation to make this deployment easier. Second element, industry. Industry in Spain. In Europe, there has been an objective for the year 2020 to represent 20%. In Spain, we are at 15%. Industry has been losing power. Before, I was talking about the deindustrialization process, but we propose to give a new boost with driving forces, driving force projects. We need to reactivate in an effective way public procurement, for instance, too. Third element, digital transformation of the country. This affects the public administration, companies, the productive fabric, but citizens too are affected. Next, research and development, another important objective. Another ratio important in Europe is to reach 3% of GDP in terms of research, development, and innovation. We are below half of that figure. We still need a lot to do in terms of this, because if not, our industry won't be able to be competitive at the world level. We will remain being a services country, and our employment won't be highly skilled. We need to change that if we change our economy and if we want our economy to be much more robust. Public policies have not been predictable enough in terms of research and development. We need a f um, better regulation. Many investments are not acknowledged by the administration. The development of software is not considered as innovation. Companies within our sector, some people think, well, that is not research and development. But we all know that any innovation in the digital world implies developing a certain software. And this is just an example where we see that there should be a correspondence between the policies and then their implementation. And I think that uh, we have a problem there. We need to acknowledge what is research and development and what is not. Talent, skills, that is essential. And I would like to talk about continuous ongoing training for workers in the labor market. This needs to evolve. The labor market is transforming, and if we want our workers to go to the digital world, they need to recycle, they need to be trained and retrained, or if not, they won't be able to keep on working. To sum up, which is the goal and the objective that we are proposing? Something which is accessible and that we can make, yes. Spain should take a leap forward in those two indexes. RI, we should become one of the top 20. Spanish economy today is among the 15 first in Europe, and in the test index, we should be among the first ones, among the first 10 players. That is the objective for the year 2020. And how can we make it? We propose we think that this is the good moment, the right moment. The government is just about to change. We should create a new ministry for digital economy to coordinate all these different actions that we are proposing. And there are two great objectives. The first the strategic objective is that we need to have a long-term plan and then we digitization should be something cross-cutting in all the different ministries of the government. The digital ministry could and should be permeating 
the whole public administration fabric. The proposal would be to focus on the market, industry, and digital transformation. Those are the three areas where this ministry should be operating saying and highlighting that regulations coming from Europe have to be transposed here in Spain quickly, and that has to be done always, uh, you know, quickly so as not to miss the train, so as not to lag behind. We are already working on that perspective. Well, uh, why are we proposing to build a digital Spain? And which are the reasons why we think that this is the right moment to give this boost in Spain? Now, as director of this event, I would like to sum up things and to tell you about the structure of this event. Institutions, here we have institutions linked to innovation, to universities, certain, some of them come from abroad. Entrepreneurs associations, the most important ones are represented here. We also have different official organizations, so just as in other editions. And I would like to refer to the media. This year we have foreign media, which are also going to be very important because they are going to speak up about us abroad. And that is essential if we want to convey these messages abroad. Industries are, all of them are represented here, all the digital industries. Some of them are not exclusively digital, but they are undergoing a transformation. For instance, financial services, the automotive sector, transportation, infrastructure, services, human resources, they are all represented here, which are our technologies. All the technologies which are operating on the market are there and are here among us. We are going to be talking about cybersecurity, big data, Internet of Things, Internet 3D, artificial intelligence. We will have the opportunity to get to know about the state of the art and all that through the experts and through the avant-garde leaders. They will be telling us about their expectations and about those new developments. Disruptive applications. Well, smart communities, smart cities, we're going to be talking about that. Something very interesting. Industry 4.0, too, we'll be talking about intelligence transportation, intelligent transportation. And to finish, I would like to tell you that this year we will have 72 speakers. Many of them are coming from abroad. We will have a chance to have eight round tables, three interviews to speakers. We also have a representation of all the different subsectors of the digital ecosystem, and I am sure that also follow ups through the social media is going to be very important. We are on streaming. More than 400 professionals are here among us. And I would like to refer to the media again. Media, they are essential. They are supporting us and they are key if we want this event to have a repercussion. We want to become a benchmark, a reference at the European level in terms of debates on digital economy. I would also like to thank the university for their support, Telefonica Foundation, thank you to all of you, and please take advantage of this opportunity. We have been making a great effort at Ametic to bring the best experts. I'm sure that the conferences and the speeches are going to be very, very interesting because we have great experts. So take advantage of this opportunity. Thank you very much again, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.